नमामि बुद्धं गुणसागरंतं सदा सदा हुंतु सुखे अवेरा खायो जी गुंजो सकलो दुगंधो गच्छन्ति संबे मरनम अहंच नमो तस् भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धंस नमो तस् भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धंस नमो तस् भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धंस संबे पापस अकरनं कुसलस उपसंपदान सचिन्त परियोदपनं एतं बुद्धान सासनं हमेश तो देख सोड़ दवान देवगर दवान ते सुप्रीमली एनलाइटन दवान साधु 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 Venerable Sirs, Friends in Dhamma, Dear Devotees, The Arizona Buddhist Vihara conducts this Dhamma sermon. Today our topic is how to apply Buddhism for our inner peace. When we see the Buddha's message, in progress. it is very clear that mm, all the Buddhist doctrines that the Blessed One explained for inner peace, mental health, mental culture. We do everything for our inner peace. From our birth to death, as human beings, we do everything in the name of happiness or contentment. However, we can see even though we see the inner peace of our life, we usually live without satisfaction. That is why we need to find the real inner peace that we can gain in our life listening to Buddha's message. Buddha's message can be summarized into one sentence, Sachit Pariyodapanam. Purifying one's mind. For the purification of beings, Buddha has explained his teachings kindly with great compassion. Before this sermon, let's practice a meditation technique for our inner peace. In Buddhist doctrines, practicing metta bhavana or loving kindness meditation is highly appreciated. Therefore, at the beginning of this sermon, we are going to practice metta bhavana or loving kindness meditation for several means for our happiness. Dear devotees, please get ready for our sitting meditation for several means for our mental culture. Relax your body, please. You can keep your right hand on the left hand. Stretch your body. Be aware of your body posture, please, from your legs to head and from your head to legs. And first of all, please take a deep breath in, hold it a few seconds, and breathe out slowly.
again take a deep breath in hold it few seconds breathe out slowly relax your body please Now I am going to practice loving kindness thoughts to everyone those who are in this world. First of all keep your attention around the nose so upper lip in the present moment. At the same time we spread loving kindness thoughts to everyone. May all beings at this home be well, happy and peaceful. May they attain their final bliss of liberation. May all beings in this city be well, happy and peaceful. May they attain the final bliss of liberation. May all beings in the east direction be well, happy and peaceful. May they attain the final bliss of liberation. May all beings in the west direction be well, happy and peaceful. May they attain the final bliss of liberation. May all beings in the north direction be well, happy and peaceful. May they attain the final bliss of liberation. May all beings in the south direction be well, happy and peaceful. May they attain the final bliss of liberation. May all beings in the entire world be well, happy and peaceful. May no harm come to them. May no problems come to them. May no difficulties come to them. May they attain the final bliss of liberation. I say that all over the world, like my family, like my friends, 
I am friendly with everyone those who are in this universe. May all beings be well, happy and peaceful. May they attain the final bliss of liberation. When I meet a person, when I think about a person, I think that person like my only son or daughter. I see the all over the world like my children, like my family. I bless all of them every moment. I am friendly with everyone, those who are in this world. May all beings be well, happy and peaceful. May they attain the final bliss of liberation. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Venerable Sirs, Friends in Dhamma, Today we are going to discuss one of the topics in Buddhism, how to apply Buddhism for our inner peace. Everyone likes become inner peace. Inner peace, happiness or contentment is the highest goal of everyone, those who are in this world. Buddhism also emphasizes this need. It says in Buddhism as Santutti Paramandanam. Happiness or contentment is the highest wealth or highest treasure of a person. We do everything for our inner peace. We study, we earn money, we do everything for this need, for this wish. Unfortunately, finally, the only thing most of them can't achieve is that inner peace. In this situation, we should understand the Buddhist path, how we practice Dhamma for our inner peace. We think that if we are well educated, if we are very rich, if we have a lot of friends, and especially children who are well educated, we have happiness, inner peace. Dear friends, actually that is not true. Our happiness depends on our mental state. Our mind decides whether we are happy or unhappy. Buddha says, Mano Pubbangama Dhamma Mano Setta Mano Maya Manasake Padutthena Bhasativa Karotiva Tatonan Dukkha Manveti Chakvan Vahato Padam Mind is the forerunner. Mind is the chief. Mind made are they. If someone speaks or acts with wicked mind, suffering follows him, even as the wheel follows the hoof of the drought oxen. And also Buddha says, Manasa ke pasannena, bhasativa karotiva. If someone does good deeds physically and verbally with pure mind, Happiness follows him, even as the shadow never leaves. This is the place where we can check whether we are on the path of inner peace or not. Whenever our mind is polluted with negative thoughts, suffering follows us. 
whenever our mind is pure and calm, happiness follows us, even as the shadow that never leaves. This is the place where we can check whether we are on the path of liberation or not. Whenever we are unhappy, be sure that our mind is polluted with negative thoughts. Whenever we are happy, righteously, it means our mind is pure and calm. Here, we should understand the negativities, unwholesome mental states, negative thoughts that disturb our peace of mind. All the negativities, evil thoughts can be summarized into three. They are greed, anger, and delusion. Greed means attachment or covetousness. Anger means ill will or detachment. And ignorance means delusion, less understanding about the world. If our mind is polluted with these negative thoughts, it means our activities are incorrect, evil. Then suffering follows us. This is the reality. This is the place where we can check whether we are successful or not. In this situation, we should train our mind into correct way. According to what the Blessed One explained, Sabha Papa Sakaranam, not to do any evil. Kusala Supa Sampada, practice good deeds. Sachit Pariyodapanam, purify one's mind. Etang Buddha Hanasasanam, this is the message of the Buddha. For inner peace, we have to overcome negative thoughts and also we should practice positive thoughts, good activities. And also, we should purify our mind from negative thoughts. Buddha's message is very clear. Buddha says, I proclaim the liberation for those who know the path, who see the path. We should have clear understanding what we practice, where we are going to. Vision is person. Right understanding is person. That is why Buddha says, Samma Ditti Puri Javam. Then we have the path or mission. Vision and mission, both of them are very important. But vision is person. Vision without mission is useless. Mission without vision is blind. In this situation, according to the Buddha's advice, we should have clear understanding what is the path for inner peace. Inner peace depends on our happiness. Our happiness depends on getting rid of suffering. Getting rid of suffering depends on purifying one's mind. The more we purify our mind, the more we overcome suffering. The more we overcome suffering, the more we achieve or gain happiness or inner peace. This is the path. You can understand your life. Whenever someone can make you angry or lustful, it means you are not successful because they can control you. If someone can make you angry, lustful, jealous, conceit, or greedy, it means you depend on outside. If you depend on outside, outside world and persons can control you. They decide whether you are happy or unhappy. But Buddhism is not like that. Buddhism says hmm, we should make a clear refuge, we should create an inner peace, unshakable mind inside. 
then outside world is unable to control us. We have made a refuge inside by ourselves. This is very important. For that, we should pay attention about our mind. We should take care of our mind. If we can take care of our mind, it means outside persons can't disturb our peace of mind. They are unable to disturb our inner peace. We should understand Buddha's path. Buddha's path. Buddha's message is very clear. His message is gradual. It has a gradual path. The blessed ones' message is like the ocean, which deepens gradually. The ocean deepens gradually from the beach to the deeper water. The exalted ones' message also like that. It deepens gradually from beginning to end. In the very first level, we should have a quality, which is that mm, gratitude. On the path of liberation, very first quality is that mm, gratitude. We should be grateful. Then we have another quality that mm, dana. Dana means practicing generosity, sharing something with others. Why do we need to practice generosity? When we practice generosity, if we share something with others, our heart is so pure and calm. When we have a generous heart, we gain happiness a lot. That is why the worthy one says, Piti mudarang vindati data. He who practices generosity gains a lot of happiness. Not only that, dadang mithani gantati. When we practice generosity, it helps us to win friends. The way to win friends is that practicing generosity. Dadang mithani gantati. He who has a generous heart wins a lot of friends. If we are greedy, actually our close relatives and friends don't like us. They are not happy with us. That is why Buddha has explained as a primary quality and meditation technique. We should practice mm, generosity. We should be generous. Mm. That is very important. It helps us to overcome greed, which is one of the reasons that disturb our peace of mind. We can practice generosity in several ways. Amisadana, Abhayadana, Dhammadana. Amisadana means gift of materials, gift of requisites. Abhayadana, gift of lives, saving others' lives, giving fearlessness. Abhayadana. And Dhammadana, the gift of Dhamma, spreading Dhamma, explaining the Dhamma, that is also one of the generosities that we can practice. In these three ways, we can practice generosity as Amisadana, Abhayadana, and Dhammadana. Amisadana means gift of requisites or materials. Abhayadana, gift of fearlessness or lives and uh, dhammadana gift of dhamma spreading dhamma or giving dhammadana when we practice this generosity we can go forward on our spiritual path for our inner peace our mind is so pure and calm if we have a generous heart that is why buddha says we always should have washed our hand to offer something to others. Buddha says very clearly, if you know the benefits of offering something to others, you never eat anything without sharing with someone. That is why before we eat, before we have some food, we donate something to others who is nearby. That is the place where we practice generosity. Not only that, as parents, 
when you give something to your children, you can give it as a generosity. Then that is not just a duty, but a mer meritorious deed, generosity. When our moms prepare something for their children, they can think, this is the place where I practice generosity. I am cooking this food for my children as for almsgiving. And also, before you give your food to your children, you can offer something for the Supreme Buddha as Buddha Puja. Every day at home, you can practice generosity and you can purify your mind from greed or attachment. The next step of the path of liberation or inner peace that the Blessed One explained, practicing sila or virtue or moral conduct, discipline in our speech and behavior. When we speak something, when we do something, the exalted one says, you should think again and again whether it is correct. When we speak something, when we do something, we should think again and again, it is good or bad, it is correct or incorrect. That is the discipline of our speech and behavior. Especially, we practice here five precepts, abstaining from taking life, abstaining from stealing, abstaining from sexual misconduct, abstaining from false speech, abstaining from intoxicating drinks and drugs causing heedlessness. When we practice these five precepts, actually we can see the success of our life. The reason is that we are honored, we are respected at home, in the society, in the world because others are confident in our behavior. They know very well we never steal anything. We don't do any sexual misconduct. We don't steal anything from others. We don't kill any being in the world. If our relatives and friends know about us, they are very confident in our life. They are happy with us. We can make a lot of friends, not only among the human beings, but even among the non-human beings. Buddha says, if someone practice virtue or moral conduct, discipline in our speech and behavior, he can make a lot of friends. His friends are confident in his life. And also, we also can be happy. We can develop our inner peace because we have no regrets about our behavior or speech. Everything that we explained or spoken or what we have done, everything is correct. We have no mistakes in our life. Therefore, we have no regrets because of seal. Little by little, we can go forward on this path. Finally, Buddha says in the Karanimita Sutta, as a wise person, he who wishes to attain the peace of mind should not do any slight wrong conduct which is considered by the wise. We should not do any slight wrong activity which is criticized by the wise. Then our life is so successful. Nobody or nothing can criticize us because of our good behavior. Our speech and behavior is correct. That is why we should practice discipline or moral conduct seal for our inner peace. We mostly see that if someone has no inner peace, they don't practice these qualities, specific five precepts. If someone can practice these five precepts, at home, we can be happy, we are proud of our behavior, and also we can go to any society without fear and shame because of our correct behavior and characteristics. That is why the worthy one explained the importance of 
having moral conduct, virtue or discipline in our speech and behavior. Now, we are talking about the qualities that we can practice for our inner peace. The very first one is being grateful for gratitude. And the second one is practicing generosity or dana. Next, practicing virtue or moral conduct, sila. And also the next step is that um, Buddha says very clearly, he who wishes to become the peace of mind should have to practice loving kindness meditation. In the Karanimeta Sutta, Buddha says very clearly, Yantan Santam Padang Abhisamecha, he who wishes to attain the peace of mind, inner peace, Sabbe Satta Bhavantu Sukhiratta, should practice, contemplate on that, um, may all beings be well, happy and peaceful. Why do we need to practice loving kindness meditation, metta bhavana? The reason is that we mostly suffer because of anger. If our mind is angry with someone, even though we are well educated, very rich, having good complexion, actually everything that we earn is useless because of this anger, which still have a peace of mind, inner peace. If we are able to manage our anger, then we can practice more than 50% stress from our mind. That is why modern psychiatrists recommend to practice loving kindness meditation for their clients for inner peace, for stress management. We mostly suffer because of anger. If we can control our anger, we can see the beauty of our life. The reason is that our mind is so pure and calm. We have no problems with others. If we can see other people like our children, like our family members. That is why we have to practice loving kindness meditation again and again, contemplating on thus may all beings be well, happy and peaceful. At the beginning, you can practice loving kindness meditation as a sitting meditation technique. While you are sitting, you can think about other people, contemplating on dasan. May all beings be well, happy and peaceful. At the beginning, you can practice this meditation for five minutes. Then little by little, you can increase the duration of practicing loving kindness meditation. For eight minutes and ten minutes, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, Little by little, when you increase the duration of practicing loving kindness meditation, you can see the beauty of your mind. You can see the beauty of your life. The reason is that little by little, you overcome anger, which disturbs your peace of mind. And finally, you should be confident that no one can make me angry. If someone can make you angry, actually you are not successful. Even though your GPA or grade point average is very high, even though your IQ or intelligence quotient is very high, if someone can make you unhappy, if someone can make you angry, actually everything that you edu studied is mm, useless. That is why Buddha says, mm, one of the measurements that you can check whether you are successful is, is that mm, having an unshakable mind that no one can make you unhappy or angry. Buddha says, mm, let's live happily without anger among the people, those who are angry. In the society, a lot of people are always angry with other people. Among those people, if you can make an unshakable mind that no one can make you angry, that is your success. For that we have to practice loving kindness meditation again and again. On the other side, Buddha has explained some techniques to develop our inner peace, reducing anger. According to Agatha Patevinya Sutta, the Supreme Buddha explained some techniques. When someone has 
misbehavior, but he has some good activities in his speech and mentality. At the moment, we should keep away his behavior, physical behavior. We should think his good verbal and mental behaviors. Then we can overcome anger about him. And also sometimes some people do some bad speech, but their behavior and mentality is correct and good. At that moment, we should keep away their evil speaks, evil words, negative words. We should think they are good behavior and mentality. Then we can keep our mind away from anger. Sometimes there are some people, they are verbally and physically do the good, bad deeds. But mentally, from time to time, they think some good, uh, good thoughts. Mm, then we can understand, we can think about their good thoughts, mm, and also we can keep away their evil words and behavior. That is also one of the techniques that we can overcome anger about some people. Sometimes we can see some people have misbehaviors verbally physically and mentally. At the moment we think actually they are not happy, they are suffering. Because of their bad behavior, evil behavior, they always are suffering. Not only they suffer in this immediate life, but after they die, they will fall into hell, which is suffering. When we think about their life, we can overcome anger about them. These are the techniques that Buddha has explained for anger management according to Agatha Parivinya Sutta. There are a lot of people in this society who are angry. We should not do like that. Our life is very valuable. Our mind is so valuable. Therefore, we should keep our mind calm and quiet for our inner peace. Here, we should overcome anger, which is the main reason of suffering. If we are able to overcome anger, be sure we can overcome more than 50% stress from our mind. That is why Buddha says, on the path of liberation or inner peace, practicing loving kindness is one of the main qualities. When we practice loving kindness meditation, we don't stop in loving kindness thoughts, but we develop four sublime states mm, and other three qualities mm, karuna, compassion, mudita, sympathetic joy, and uh, upekha, equanimity. Metta, karuna, mudita, upekha. These are the four sublime states that the Brahmas are dwelling with in the Brahma realms. They are living, spreading these four sublime states to the world. If someone can practice these four qualities in this human life, having a human physical body, physically, but mentally we can live like Brahma beings. We can see the beauty of our life. Our inner peace depends on the duration of practicing loving kindness meditation reducing greed. If we have practiced loving-kindness meditation, a lot of negative thoughts go away from our mind. When we see other people like our children, at the moment we have no greed, no jealousy, no conceit, no anger. Because we think other people like our children like our family members. This is the way how we think about the world for our inner peace. And also, again Buddha says, the highest quality that we can practice is for our inner peace, that mm, mindfulness, being aware of our body and mind. 
in the primary level in the mundane level we discuss the primary qualities that we can practice practicing gratitude being grateful and practicing generosity practicing discipline in our speech and behavior and also in the mundane level primary level the highest quality that we can practice for in a peace is that um, practice in loving kindness meditation spread in loving kindness towards to everyone those who are in this world the highest quality that we can check whether we are successful is that um, when we meet a person suddenly immediately we should have an intention that um, this person is like my only son or daughter this is the highest attitude of practice in loving kindness for our inner peace having this quality we go to the next level we came to this level with the first level of samadhi the right understanding kamma sakata samadhi the understanding the karmic law whatever we do with intention we will have the same results if our mind is polluted the results are negative suffering follows us when our mind is pure and calm happiness follows us even as that the shadow never leaves us with this understanding little by little we practice our qualities we purify our mind from negativity such as greed anger conceit and jealousy the next level for the next level we should have another understanding which is the dependent origination understanding the dependent origination is the highest knowledge which is given which is explained by the exalted one what is the dependent origination when our mind is ignorant mental formations arise which with consist with um, ignorance what is that um, our entire life is that um, six senses six internal senses and six external objects um, they are our eye ear nose um, kan body and mind and external objects um, such as form smell sound like that we always experience the world through these six senses when we look at something we think that i experience something which is happening at the moment actually that is not true when we see something at the very first experience we contact something through our eye when we look at something our eye arises at the moment according to our present mental condition and forms arise i contact arises and consciousness arises when we look at something according to our present mental condition the present eye arises hmm, form arises hmm, i consciousness arises hmm, and i contact arises at the pe- at the very first experience we are unable to understand something completely the first experience is the very primary experience when we recognize something through our eye consciousness actually the first experience has ceased you usually think that i see something through my eye i hear something through my ears i smell something through my nose i taste something through my tongue i touch something through my body that is true we contact something with our senses but when we understand something the very first experience has ceased what is the first experience when you see something and when you recognize something through your eye your first experience 
your eye form, eye consciousness, eye contact, everything has ceased. Our mind is so fast. Because of this speed, we are unable to understand this reality. We usually think we recognize something through our eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose consciousness, or tongue consciousness, or body consciousness. Actually, Buddha says very clearly, Na panchahi vijnani hi kena ki dhamma pati vijnanati. We are unable to recognize something through our five consciousness. Anyatra abhinipatamatta, just contact. Then Buddha says, Sabbe dhamma mano vijnana dhatu ya vijnaya. Everything is realized by the mind consciousness. The interesting thing is that mm, when we recognize something through our mind consciousness, the first experience has ceased. This is the place where we can gain the real knowledge according to what the Blessed One explained. First of all, we should have the knowledge, Sutta Menyana, the knowledge based on hearing, which is now you are getting. That is the very first experience, vision, samadhiti, sutta menyana, the knowledge based on hearing or listening to. Then, chinta me panya, you should think this reality again and again, the knowledge based on contemplating on or thinking about it. Then we have to become the next stage, bhavana me panya, the knowledge based on meditation, samatha and vipassana, concentration and insight meditation. When we have this understanding, we understand whenever we are unhappy, whenever we have no inner peace, it means outside persons and things are controlling us. It means our mind is fixed in outside material world because of our ignorance. What is the ignorance or delusion? We think there is something I am experiencing at the moment in the material world. That is the ignorance. Actually, the first experience has all the disease. If we want to overcome stress or defilements or negative thoughts, then we have to keep away from the outside world for that we have the knowledge, what happens to our life. We are always living with our mind consciousness. Whenever we are unhappy, it means our mind is fixed in material world which has all the disease because of our ignorance. Whenever we depend on inside, it means we are reflecting on impermanence. What is the reflecting on impermanence? We contemplate on that, mm, my eye is impermanent, form is impermanent, eye consciousness is impermanent, eye contact is impermanent, everything is impermanent. When I recognize something, the first experience has is, for an example, you usually look at the sky at night. When you see the sky, you can see some stars, some solar systems, some galaxies you can see. Sometimes when you look at the sky and when you see a star or galaxy, those stars may vanish or cease for a long time. Because they are very far, the light came for a long time, therefore you can see the world. You can see the stars. If you see this reality, you can see the stars. But you know very well, now at the moment, at that situation, there are no stars because they have ceased for a long time. Then you can take a picture. You can be happy. You can criticize those stars. But you know very well, there are no stars at the place at the moment. 
they have seized for a long time, they have destroyed for a long time, then you have no attachment or detachment. Why is that? Mm. You have understanding that mm, those stars have already seized. Like that. Mm. When you look at something, when you hear something, when you taste something, when you smell something, when you touch something, if you are mindful that mm, these forms have ceased already, then you see the insight. Usually, you know, ordinary people always look at outside, but you, the Buddha's disciples, always look at inside. When you see something, you suddenly look at inside, what happens to my mind? If you can understand that mm, when you recognize something, the external world has seized, then you can make an unshakable mind you are in equanimity, you are in upekha. For that, we have to practice a path. What is the path? Path, the noble eightfold path, Arya Tangika Magra. With this understanding, always we listening to Dhamma for samadhiti, right understanding. Through right understanding, we understand the world as impermanent. Then we have Samma Sankhapa, right intention, right thoughts. We practice kindness and loving kindness. And Samma Vacha, we always speak correct words, abstaining from false speech, slandering, harsh speech, and useless words. Samma Kamanta, we have right action, abstaining from taking life. Stealing and sexual misconduct. Sama Aji, right livelihood. We earn money righteously and honestly. Sama Vayam, right effort. Not to do evil and for practice good deeds, right effort. And Sama Sati, right mindfulness. Being aware of our body and mind. By practicing mindfulness, we achieve that we gain concentration that says um, Samma Samadhi, right concentration. We conduct everything in the field of the Noble Eightfold Path. If we have correct understanding, we meet the path that leads to inner peace, which is the Noble Eightfold Path. Arya Attangika Magga. When we study, we do it righteously. When you earn money, you follow the Samma Aji, right livelihood. When we speak something, you practice Samma Vacha, right speech. When you practice mindfulness, it belongs to Samma Sati, right mindfulness. When you concentrate your mind, you are in the field of Samma Samadhi, right concentration. When you have an effort, that belongs to Samma Vayama, right effort. This is the place where we can check whether we are in the path of inner peace or not. Whenever we practice the Noble Eightfold Path, that is the fearless path, that is the direct path. Buddha says, Ujuko Nama Somaggo Abhya Nama Sadisa. This path is fearless path, direct path for our inner peace. You know, when we become this path, mm, we are un uncomfortable. But you know, when we enter the, this path, mm, going away from the path is uncom uncomfortable. Because we see the results. Mm, when we practice the Noble Eightfold Path, Samadhiti, Samasankapa, like that, mm, we do everything according to the Eightfold Path. Then we have no problems, our speech is correct, our behavior is correct, our thinking pattern is correct, our effort is correct. Mm. Nobody or nothing can disturb our peace of mind. Nobody can criticize us. Mm. Nobody can make us mm, angry, lustful, conceit, jealous mm, because of this path. 
as the result of this path Buddha says we can check our success what are the signs of our success Buddha says let's live happily among the people those who are angry let's live happily without anger among the people those who are angry and also let's live without mental illnesses among the people those who are mentally ill what are the mental illnesses greed anger jealousy conceit ill will these are the negative thoughts these are the mental illnesses a lot of people in the society you know they are mentally ill with these mental illnesses but you know the dhamma you can make an unshakable mind that nobody can make you sick mentally this is your success for that we can go forward in our success finally according to buddha's message all the qualities can be summarized into two pillars what they are in one side practice in loving kindness meditation on the other side practice in mindfulness according to emotional intelligence in the western society like dr daniel goleman has explained the qualities of a person according to emotional intelligence ei there are five qualities we can see in a person who has a good personality what they are self awareness self regulation inner motivation empathy and uh, social skills these are the main qualities of new education not just your gpa even though your gpa grade point average is very high if you have no self awareness self regulation empathy social skills actually you are not successful because outside persons can control you outside persons can make you unhappy therefore the main qualities according to present education you should develop in your life are that um, there are five qualities they are self awareness self regulation inner motivation empathy and social skills or communication skills the interesting thing is that um, all these qualities are explained in buddhism what the buddha explained in one stanza in dhammapada uttanavato satimato suchikammasa nisammakharino sanyatassa ca dhamma jivino appamattasa yaso bivaddati all the qualities can be summarized in this one stanza uttanavato inner motivation satimato self awareness or mindfulness suchi kammas self regulation discipline in our speech and behavior and uh, empathy or such social skills um, samma vacha right speech we are so lucky when we study buddha's message we can see the all qualities in this world and also we know the path how we attain the real path of inner peace by reducing negative thoughts from our mind greed anger and delusion we can achieve the real peace of mind by practicing generosity we are able to overcome greed or attachment in addition by practicing the contemplation of impurity of body parts we can overcome lust by practicing loving kindness meditation we can overcome anger or ill will which disturb our peace of mind by practicing self awareness or mindfulness we are able to overcome ignorance or delusion completely this is the path of liberation inner peace emancipation freedom enlightenment that the blessed one 
explain. The more you practice loving kindness meditation and mindfulness, the more you are able to overcome greed, anger and delusion. The more you reduce and overcome these negativities from your mind, greed, anger and delusion, the more you overcome suffering. The more you overcome suffering means the more you achieve, you gain inner peace, happiness or liberation in your life. For that, I wish you all the best. By the power of this meritorious deed, may you have to practice this path in your lifetime and gain the results in this immediate life. Hmm. With that intention, let's say, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. If you have any question, you can ask. Any question? Our topic was how to apply Buddhism for our inner peace. We explained the path by practicing generosity, practicing virtue, moral conduct, and especially practicing loving kindness meditation. We can overcome greed and anger. And also, with the understanding of the dependent origination, we should practice mindfulness for our inner peace. According to especially Western psychiatrics, hmm, there are two qualities we should practice for our inner peace, for our stress management. They are loving kindness and mindfulness. We are so fortunate. The Supreme Buddha has explained these qualities before 2500 years ago. Buddha says, hmm, he who wishes to attain the peace of mind should practice loving kindness meditation. And also Buddha says, hmm, Ekaino ayam bhikkave maggo satthana visuddhya yadidan chattaro satipattana. The only path for the purification of beings and getting rid of suffering is that hmm, practice in mindfulness. These qualities I explained in Buddhism before 2500 years ago. We are so lucky having such a sublime message delivered by the Blessed One and protected and brought by the Mahasangha that we receive in the present society. Any question? Our children, you can ask any question if you have. Our parents, elders. You should make an unshakable mind that no one can disturb your peace of mind. If someone can make you unhappy, angry or lustful, then we should train our mind to overcome these negativities from our mind. Okay, if there are no questions, we are going to conclude and end our sermon. Okay, dear Reverend Sir, I appreciate your kind intention to listening to Dhamma. By the power of this spiritual energy, may your departed relatives also receive this spiritual energy. May they are enhance their spiritual energy and finally may they also attain the blissful life and finally may they attain the final bliss of liberation. With that intention, let's say, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. I really appreciate and uh, transfer marriage to Mrs. Uh, Indra Adhiheti, who is sponsored this Dhamma sermon. And also we uh, bless Bhante Bodhika, who invited us to deliver this sermon. And also we really appreciate all of you. You are listening to Dhamma with good intention for your inner peace. 
by the power of all these meritorious deeds, mm, may you be well, happy and peaceful. May no harm come to you, may no problems come to you, may no difficulties come to you, may you all righteous wishes, especially may our children, may our children's educational goals meet with success. Finally, may all of us attain the final bliss of liberation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Dukkham pantha ancha nidhukkham Bayam pantha ancha nidhbayam Sokham pantha ancha nidhsokham Untu sambhe pipaninu